Hello, this is Haka Devine, and I'm here with SCP-50, 51, and 52. SCP-53, 54, and 55 will all have their own videos. Due to the extreme uniqueness of 53 and 55, and the fact that I don't know what to put together with 54. And it is also a unique SCP in its own right. Starting with SCP-50, to the cleverest. Item number, SCP-50, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. So far, all attempts at, to contain SCP-50 have been fruitless. Testing to contain SCP-50 has been continue, discontinued at this time. At present, whoever has possession of SCP-50 is to leave it in an office they use with regularity. Attempts to leave SCP-50 in unused offices have resulted in it following its owner home. This is a violation in our regulations and not to be allowed. SCP-50 appears to be a statue of a monkey reading a book, approximately a one foot tall. One of the quirks of SCP-50 is that no matter what form of measurement is used, any record of said measurement will quickly be replaced by the customary system measurements. On the bottom of the statue are engraved words to the cleverest in the cursive script. The statue has so far proven resistant to all forms of damage. Attempts to damage SCP-50 have resulted in increasingly lethal pranks as writing this destruction testing is discontinued. As such, there is no accurate method to date the object. When left alone, SV-50 has shown itself to be both useful and antagonistic to its current owner. See document 50. Although not never seen to move, no matter the matter or, or attempt of recordings, any room it is left in becomes very clean to polish whenever possible. Papers filled, trash is emptied, and general clutter is removed. However, SV-50 also has a tendency to leave traps for, the owner, for its owner. So current and holders should carefully check their offices upon returning. Before we continue, I completely forgot to ask you all to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Oh, no, wait. I forgot I wanted to check out Document 50. My bad. That was a very short SCP document. Let's see if this will add something to this. The Great Researcher Prank Roar of a Blank. In January of a year into the 2000s, during a test of capture of SCP-963 by Chaos Search Insurgency agents, Dr. Bright made use of 963's intrinsic capabilities to make fools of the attempted kidnappers. When Bright returned to his office, he found a monkey statue waiting for him. His office had been tied in his absence and everything filed away, which came as something of a, of a shock for naturally messy Dr. Bright. Upon further investigation, it was found that despite the apparent tightness of his office, all of his pants had been drained and of all but the last bit of ink, and several important documents have been translated into Aramaic. Dr. Wright immediately began the usual testing of this new SCP, but found himself going nowhere. Until Dr. Wright, as payback for something unspecified, smeared his desk with one half of a compound epoxy and a pulp, I had the other half of the compound to his utensils. At this point, SP-50 vanished from Dr. Bright's office, reappearing in Dr. Wright's office, whereupon on 50 began to clean up again. After several tests, it became apparent that SP-50 was easily contained as long as no one outside the Foundation proved to be cleverer than the Foundation scientists. Of course, this led to many of the Foundation scientists seeking to claim the title of most clever for themselves. And thus began the great research, research war of 
blank. All right, then 50A. No good will come of this. <sighs> and D1. Right to English. Dr. English accesses SP705. 705 is allowed access to approximately 100 pounds of similarly colored Play Doh. After several mi minutes' conversation, the new army retreats through the ventilation straps. No footage of Dr. Bright's room exists, but several hours later, Dr. Bright stumbles out, covered in little red wet elt and red play doh, sawing and muttering. SC50 transfers ownership to Dr. English. When it transferred from English to Eisendorf. At 11.30 p.m. on an unknown date, Agent and, and, and Stronikov is seen exiting his room in a full rage, carrying a machine gun and smoke pours from the open door of his quarters. Senior researcher Isendorf is later found to be in possession of SCP-850, proving that a good enough prank will attract SCP-50's attention no matter the target. From Isendorf to Kondraki At 10.25 a.m. on an unknown date, Dr. Isendorf Return from a brief coffee break to discover a type of note sitting on his desk rewritten here. Dr. Eisenorf, it seems there was a problem with the Class A of Net Easy IQ requested following your SP231 assignment. Please hop on the next ex plane leaving from the site and wait until someone comes and picks you up so that we can get this all sorted. Cheers, 05 blank. Despite factual and stylistic errors in the note, and appropriately informal style, the fact that there is no overseer or three uh, pi, Dr. Eisendorf apparently took the note seriously and became highly distressed. Dr. Eisendorf boarded the next airplane leaving Site 23, which turned out to be regularly scheduled flight traveling to Site 19. Dr. Eisendorf apparently did not realize this until landing, at which point he Still waited over eight hours outside the site before a guard found him and asked him what he was doing. Dr. Eisendorf soon confirmed that he had been assigned to SCP-231 and quickly worked out what had happened. SV-50 was observed in the office of Dr. Kondraki later that same day. Unrestricted and transferred from Kondraki to called. At 7.28, it, on an unknown day in 2009, Dr. Kondraki was caught away by assistant and researcher House under pretense of a of a, a, an SCP-173 breach. Security cameras re recovered footage of the ensuing prank. Upon returning to his office, Kondraki pauses briefly when he re reaches his door. Moments later, he is seen slowly back to slowly out of his, his office, keeping his eyes fixed on something inside. It was later revealed that Dr. Cod had placed a replica of SCP-173 in Kondraki's office, positioned in such a way that it faced the door, establishing eye contact with whoever might enter the room. Kondraki continues to retreat until and the slipping on a, a hit her though I know at all. On an unnoticed puddle of pudding, of cooking oil. Why am I saying things weird? Anyway, the replica of SP-173 made of wireframe paper mache and spray paint was relocated to Dr. Joseph Cowd's office, shortly followed by SP-50. From call to your orc. Upon returning to his office on a on a day in the. In 2009, Dr. Cod was surprised to find his statue replaced with a note. Upon reading, I can't believe no one saw this. The statue was later located in the staff locker of Agent Yorick, who had simply stolen it. <laughs> this is too funny.
Sachi returns to call, to Yorick's living space in utter array. Vision Yorick is found unconscious, the words to be earned tattooed on his forehead through unknown means. I mean, that's fair enough. From call to light. From one date in 2009 to another date in 2009, and they are both unknown dates, Mason seems to have called 27 times to Dr. Cod's office while he was out, all having received orders to install, repair, or remove a piece of furniture from the office. Apparently at random, Dr. Cod became increasingly paranoid about these intrusions, during the possession of SV-50, and at blank of a, an unknown time of a, an unknown day in 2009, decided to bring his paperwork and the SV back to his quarters, there's work from um, there. Upon entering his quarters, Dr. Cotter was doused by the contents of a bucket carefully a balance on the entrance's door jam. Ownership of SCP-50 changes to Dr. Light. Oh, no. <laughs> on a date in 2009, Dr. Coleman was seen pinning a nose to the big Break room nose board with its red. Due to the effects of SCP blank, all personnel who have received them as sick of any time and within the past six months are required to report to Dr. Light immediately. This was signed and notarized by no fewer than 17 members of O5 and its senior staff. After seeing this, an email was immediately sent out retracting the information, causing mass panic among some of our more paranoid employees, who could only be described as a bum rush on Dr. Light's newly firm. Before his office, resulting in the destruction of many items contained within. SV50 was found in Coleman's desk. Oh, jeez. I'm curious about how it goes from an agent to an SCP that I don't even know. Anyway. On an unknown date in 2009, Dr. Coleman was called out of his quarters by an email from an unknown source. Five minutes later, security footage showed Dr. Okagawa entering in Schumacher's quarters and carrying a bag with its unknown contents, and leaving the room a few minutes later without the bag. Upon returning, Coleman discovered a dead run which appeared to have been slattered in the secretions of SCP-447. Personnel in adjacent rooms Report having, report hearing a scream of profanity. Worried, researchers found him passed on the floor while the slime was later identified as green gelatin from the kitchen and the dead rat at, as a rubber toy. SV-50 was later found in, in Okagawa's office. The names are getting harder to pronounce. I'm just lucky I'm so much of a weeb that I know how to say a Okagawa pretty easily. Video log of a random date in 2009 at 12.34 p.m. That's like half past noon. Okagawa leaves for the cafeteria, presumably for lunch and for late breakfast. Researcher Chapelowski is seen entering Dr. Okagawa's office, carrying several testing vials and SCP blank left the office five minutes later, closing the door behind him rather hurriedly. Okagawa returns ten minutes later, opens the door, and is snagged by a large tentacle which pulls him into the office and shuts the door behind him. A security team is, is dispatched to Okagawa's office and discovers him entangled by a giant squid. The team is seen trying to neutralize the cephalopod and free Okagawa. The animal's remains were subsequently destroyed. SV50 has been located has been located in Joe Oski's office. Oh no. On a day in 2012, researcher Archipelski came into work at approximately 8 in the morning and promptly received a pie in the face courtesy of Project Director Jones. SV50 was found on Project Director Jones' desk later that afternoon. Well, that, that wasn't original at all! from Dr. Bright. On another date, a project director, Jones reported uh, uh, to his fellow uh, researching SV Blank upon entering the facility, he was met by a uh, researcher, Archipelski, who threw two of pies at his face. SV50 was found in researcher Archipelski's office ten minutes later. 
On her day in 2012, the prosecutor reserves the office to find Project Director Jones waiting for him with three pies, which he promptly threw at the researcher's face. A C-50 appeared in, in Jones' workplace that evening. Guys, I think we broke it. In the middle of the workday, Dr. Bright entered Jones' research lab with four pies, which he threw in his face. As he was leaving, security for the record uh, is him, him saying, This better not freaking work. S-50 was on Dr. Bright's desk upon his upon his return. Gosh darn it! Okay, no more freaking pies, alright? Bright to an SCP. I'm running out of time. On the day of 2012, an error occurred in the Foundation and, and main database. Resigning system technician came to a squad at the uh, stopping to dread at Lloyd as as a tof of alongside the cleaning crew during the uh, I, I, of Castro of fire assignment that Ezra Ken was ordered to save the princess from the barren black stuff of as sewage with j several gallons of feces golden platinum on his head. During the second half of the assignment and Sir Ken and his friend and and some magical night bob had to test several something ma super magic weapons despite elder during this time routine system suite had found a barrel of pure awesomeness in the database despite the numerous nearby systems that could have infected scp elite or the dreadlord of a on a volcano concerning system technician kent's assignment this technician kent was returned to site 20 a three largely unharmed. SV fifty was discovered Erdsing by hard drive heavily infected with SCP seven thirty two. With its such use seeming to consider the virus its new owner. Wow. Data expunged. I'm guessing data expunged. And it goes to light. On the 8th in 2012, Dr. Light connected the SV32 infected hard drive to a scanner and asked SV32 if it could produce low CAD images on request. And in response, presented in the form of an 8000 N word Eric story featuring itself in the form of a man named Lord Kickass, Dr. Light and redacted, it was that at, with the help of SV50, it can do anything. SV, Dr. Light provided a 732 with a scanned photographs of, of SV577. SV529 and SV EP607 and two instances of SV331. SV732 produced 10 loci at images for each photograph. Dr. Light then provided an SV732 with SV683 in the form of a drawing by SV637. And two, I am not reading this right. As a result of this, 732 was rapidly overridden with an estimated 63 gigabytes of text describing SV637's actions and appearance, whereas this information could have filled all available computers and memory is unknown. As the last actions of the Lord Kickass instant entries were to induce total mechanic failure to his heart drive, accompanied by catastrophic, uncontrolled oxidation. SV50 was found in Dr. Erlite's office the next morning. Note, SCP-6372 reports that SCP-637 was not harmed by its venture into SCP-732, but its fur was really messed up. Note, other copies of SCP-832 seem unaffected by suicide of Lord Kickass. I have 8 minutes. Let's hope I can get through 2 SCPs in that amount of time. This might, this might take a little bit longer than I thought. SCP-51 Object Class Safe SCP-51 and SCP-51 are to be kept SCP-51A are to be kept in sealed containment facility SCP-51 and A is kept within a locked climate controlled document box with a viewing window to prevent the degradation of its material. Any personnel with the exception of pregnant or non serial female personnel who might not be aware of an early ESA's pregnancy may access SC-51 as long as a request is placed beforehand and cleared by a site administration. 
Description, SCP-51 is a 25cm, 10-inch, anatomically correct model of a human female carved out of ivory with typically Asian features. Microscopic analysis shows that the head hair is human hair. The dot is joined at the shoulder, hips, and knees. The stomach area of the dot is fully removable as a, a cap of ivory. Exposing a detailed rib cage and organs, and a two and a half centimeter, one inch ivory fetus connected to the main figure by a leather cord umbilicus. When brought into the presence of a pregnant human female, SC51 has various deleterious effects upon the pregnancy, generally resulting in miscarriage of the fetus. Reports include a gentle compulsion to handle the model, open its stomach cap, and take out the fetus. This results in nausea and cramping within five minutes and special bleeding that begins at spotting and may progress to hemorrhage within the next half hour and miscarriage within 2 to 24 hours in most recorded cases. Medical records indicate that ivory fetuses bear moderate to severe defects. Pregnancies carries a term after special earthly model have resulted in severely deformed life forms, Earths, including in blank deaths of the mothers and blank infants terminated after birth by the living physician. See interview 51 below. Witnesses to these live births showed signs of severe emotional trauma that was alleviated after foundation interview it was by administration of a Class A amnestic. SV-51A is a fragment of text on rice paper that was discovered with SV-51. The describing text is written by plant-derived ink and as dated into the 12th century, and the characters have been identified as a known early dialect of Japanese. Translation reveals the text as part of a prayer or spell against demons that attack unborn babies. Oh yeah, this is called a Japanese obstetrical model. I did not read that at earlier. I should have done so before. The incantation order sees for horses or demon and into the model instead of a pregnant woman and claims to trap them there. However, senders have to grade the paper and ink so that the full incantation instructions, if any, cannot be deciphered. Other than them, SV-51 and SV-51A were discovered in a box of early the Japanese artifact X delivered anomalously to the Blanket Museum in 1938. After 60 years and a number of incidents resulting in contact by female secretaries, research and students, and agent on staff, you are not supposed to go to another page. God freaking dang it. I do not have time for this. And the museum's archives learned of its properties and obtained it for foundation study. Interview 51-1. Please hurry up. I have five minutes. <sighs> Interviewed Dr. David Ed Aaronfield. Interviewer Agent Bob. Dr. Er Aaronfield was the attending physician at the death of Marv Arthur Ar Ar Redacted Museum on January 2, 1942. This interview was conducted off site as a Dr. Erinfield was a resident of uh, the unknown nursing facility. At the time of the interview, he was 95 years old and physically infirm. Though retaining most of his mental faculties, a class A amnestic was administered after the interview. Interviewer Thank you for seeing me, Doctor. Dr. Erinfield You're welcome. I have outlived most people who would care to hear such stories. Then again, they surely would have thought I was selling lies or slipping into dementia. Now you might think that you're saying, but at my age, I do not care. <laughs> Can you tell me what I remember of the events of January 2nd and 1942? It was an ugly day. Cold and ugly. Blank can be a wonderful city sometimes, but winter is a bad season. It was late in the evening when my housekeeper told me I had been called. I was tired, but my birth is always a wonderful experience. And I, I thought it would cheer me. A <laughs> Coughing, sound doctor sipping liquid. I had a nurse with me, but the girl never came to my office after that night. Fifteen minutes, perhaps, for the cab to reach the museum from my house. I'm not certain, but I think so. The Norman was waiting for me. He led me to the room where they had poor Miss as our, our laid out on a low table covered with some canvas on clothes. I think to make her more comfortable. What was her condition when you arrived? Thinking back now, I should have realized it was very bad. I was young and had not much experience. She was quiet and only grunted with each contraction. She did not respond when I, I checked her vital signs and spoke to her. She did not even look at me. There was quite a bit of blood. A gush of it covered my hands as I reached down and began at helping her with the birth. The floor was slick with it and underneath her, and the baby had not crowned yet. She was dilated and well, and the contractions were quite close together. This made me 
He appears she might be having a breech birth. I showed a calm face, though. I did not want to panic my nurse or to research her to Dr. Merrill, who was nearby. I identified an older man. I believe I want to impress him. A pause. Breathing sounds more sipping. I'm not going to overplay this because we need to hurry up. And then, Doctor? I was concerned because of all the blood that her life was in danger. I told her to push, and she was pushing. Her nurse helped her, putting downward pressure on the abdomen. As I attempted to merely aid the infant's and emergence, I'll spare you the details of a brief each birth procedure. It can be found in any obstetrics manual of the time. I profoundly and felt. I thought it was a coil of, of umbilicus, probably tangled around the baby's neck. I almost was through, thinking that uh, an is is your tummy would be required, but she tore it before I could proceed. There was more blood, and the baby began to emerge into my hands. I had never seen such a thing. You're a researcher. Do you know how much of a common cephalic birth effects? This was uncommon. I thought at first that the infant must be stillborn. Its flesh was gray, not the vernix covered gray of a normal birth, but lifeless and degraded. The smell of decay. I recoiled, and the poor mother screamed on her last push, and the infant was delivered into my arms with a great rush of hemorrhage. The deformity, unspeakable. The thoracic, the thoracic cavity was completely open. The limbs. But wasn't a stillbirth? Uh, oh, sorry. But it wasn't a stillbirth. It looked at me. I heard the nurses above me be beginning resuscitation attempts and heard her gasp and falter as she, as she saw what I held. Gacking at the smell, I filled the a room. I tried to drop the creature, but I clung to my hands. I felt my skin begin to blister and crack. Strange how I clearly remember it. At my age, sometimes I cannot even remember what I had left for dinner. The infant was almost double the length of a normal viable fetus at eight months. Its lower, its lower body segmented. Coughing, almost choking. A pause of two minutes while the interview or assist doctor around and filled with a nearby oxygen mask. What did you do then? I began to laugh, and I killed it. I broke its neck while it looked at me. Was there ever any questions and so consequences? In 1942, would the country get war and two respected professional men to give their testimony? No. The museum building had a furnace. I disposed of the infant's body myself. We claimed it was more a normal defect had taken the life of mother and child. Jasmine was a director that cared for nothing but her life. I have a choice policy. I believe if he was drafted shortly thereafter and died somewhere in France. I left my practice almost immediately. I never delivered another child. Closing statement. Dr. Ehrenfeld expired four months later of, of pneumonia. Huh. Guess he was old. Anyway, final SCP. We're still going to keep on rushing through this because I am officially... Minutes late. I'm gonna hope this one is a quick one. Whew, it is very quick. Okay. SP-52 is, uh, like to say, the time-traveling train? I remember. SCP-52. Object Class Euclid. Special equipment procedures. Although it is not possible to remove SP-52 from the New York subway system, its predictable behavior allows the Foundation to prevent the public from encountering it. The 59th straight... It, it ABC the station and is be closed to the public. Yes, yeah, time traveling train. From eleven AM to one un, from eleven PM to one AM on Saturdays and Sundays under pretext of track maintenance. During that time the station is, is to be staffed with agents from Mobile Task Force Gamma Six. Agents who have been ordered to prevent accidental public act as to the station and to capture anyone leaving SP fifty two. Anyone who has been on SP-52 must be transported to Site-21 for debriefing and processing. Members of the public who see SP-52 may be released after the administration of a Class B amnestic. Description 
SCP-853-2 is, is a type R4 network or a, a subway train. O official records indicate this train was built in 1932 and this and decommissioned for scrap in 1975. Nevertheless, it, it continues to appear on the Uptown AD track at 9th Street and 8th Avenue Station at 1157 and, and p.m. every Saturday. This train is in perfect condition and labels as an A train. SP-52 appears at a designated time, opens the stores to accept and discharge passengers for approximately 5 minutes, and closes the stores and disappears. It does not appear to ever contain passengers except for those leaving the train during its appearance. The majority of subjects that have aboarded SP-52 have not been recovered. Passengers leaving SP-52 claim to have boarded on various dates between 1976 up to 2204. The, the latter claim is, is he, he thought SP-52 was a 300th anniversary special train. Subject retains no knowledge of time I'm on board. Addendum. Passengers leaving in SP-52 must be brought to Site-21 interrogate to determine their origin and possible threat to the current time stream. Generally, passengers from the past may be given a Class A amnestics and reintegrated into society. Passengers from the future must be held indefinitely. See Order 61A1 from 059. Site 21 currently holds 26 recovered passengers. Despite our probable cost to prevent public access, we are still receiving subjects from the future, although some are from alternate timelines. It is possible SV-52 will begin to appear at another time place is requiring expanded containment. The Foundation has place several subjects onto the train in an attempt to understand its activities were not visible. Test 52-1 May 31st, 2009 Agent Blank placed on train, not recovered as of present date. June, test 52 -2. June 6, 2009 Agent Blank is a train, not recovered as he apparently returned to 1980 and was killed in a confrontation with Redacted. Test 52-3 See notes on recovery Earned passenger 52-4. After test 52-3, a, a man issued orders that no further agents should be risked as passengers of SP-52. Consideration has been given to using the class C personnel in their place, but the risk of releasing them into the past is too great. Log of recovered pass passengers in Foundation and custody. Passenger 5201, air train in July 14, 2012, recovered March 8, 2008. And Catherine on her way home from the theater when she saw the train 521 was expressed uh, as a surprise and dismay to have traveled back in time for years, but appears to be otherwise unchanged and unharmed. She has been determined to currently exist in this timeline and must be held indefinitely to prevent unwanted uh, temporal uh, effects. Passenger 522, air train. In June 12, 1976, recovered on March 15, 2008. Notes: Subject and train and were lost on the way to Studio 54. Although unharmed and not a temporal threat, Unit 2 is being held as the examining fact. Psychiatrist released 32 years is a too -oo long a period over which to facilitate successful reintegration. Faster 52-3, Inter train December 6, 2014, recovered June 20, 2009. Notes, a tourist from, from Jacksonville, Florida. Subject 523 now speaks Albanian instead of English. Held due to uh, all five orders for subsequent future as well as possible reintegration difficulties. Passenger 524 entered train in June 13, 2009. Recovered June 27, 2009. Agent Blake from Test 52-3. The agent returned with his hand search to be removed and a note in his pocket with the message, Send no more. Some of us don't remember his experience on the train, but when subjected to hypnosis, revealed data expunged. Passenger 52-5, Agent Blank, entered train at an at unknown on future date in a violation of protocol. On July 11, 2009, body of subject was violently thrown from the, the train, lying 10 meters away. On examination, Soder was found to have been data expunged, but a security be increased to prevent Soder from entering SV-52 is under consideration. Passenger 52-6. Blink claims to be a level of four supervisor from the SV Federation. 
who entered the tree in, in, in December 2124. Stevens had been an administered a Class A prime in Nessic Harbor reporting and a successful attempt to avoid the fate of Festers 52 and 5 Recovered February 6, 2010, as he will never be released from Foundation custody, O5 Command has approved sharing otherwise classified information about other fact, artifacts in our possession in hopes of gaining new methods of con attainment and becoming aware of future security breaches. Agent Blank has been corruptive and claims that is good that uh, we do not uh, know how to uh, open SCP-699. So returns is simply pale and refuse to discuss this item further. To be a survivor of the great zombie, the plague of uh, of 1992 caused by an SCP-8 containment breach. That SCP blank can be killed by Diet Sponge with a Diet Sponge. An SCP blank permission to try this has been denied by I O Five blank. That he worked for Jack Bright. This has been SCP fifty, fifty one, and fifty two. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you next time with a lot more time so I don't have to rush through these ever again. Please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help a lot. I'll see you next time.